And now, the Android Basics segment. This is a segment where we discuss the things that power your device from behind the scenes. And now, here's this week's episode, Android Basics. Let's now turn on to the Android Basics. And as indicated earlier, today we're talking about Android 16 Developer Preview 1, something that dropped, I think that was last week. Or was it this week? It was this week, right, guys? <laughs> That was Wednesday, I believe, or was it Tuesday? Yeah, yeah. One of those two. I know that I got it that same day. And um, uh, basically, this was for uh, Pixel phones, and I'm not sure that, that there was a GSI version of it as of yet. But anyway, so I got my Pixel 9 XL Pro enrolled, and you know what? It's just working like normal. I, I can't even tell that I'm running a developer preview except for when it boots up and of course it shows you that you are running an android beta and all of that uh the one thing that i find that actually is even better than what i had earlier on was that for some reason ever since i got my pixel 9 uh, pro xl the uh the finger taps uh, sometimes they are not registering they were not registering but for some reason after updating to the developer preview of Android 16, it's a surefire every single time. I mean, it's just just like that, absolutely beautiful. So I don't know what was going on and I did a factory reset to be sure and yep, it still is working beautifully. So that's what I got. John, did you enroll yours? I know you were sometimes a little bit hesitant you didn't enroll it in the uh, QPR, something I didn't do myself. But I, in, I enrolled my 7 and 8 uh, on the QPR, but not the uh, the 9. Did you did you jump onto the developer or uh, you're waiting running, for the pen? Still running boring uh, Android 15 QPR 0. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> but so what's really interesting about this, you know, remember, guys, we were talking earlier on and I was saying, you know, if Google is going to be rolling out the stable version sometime in June or June 3rd, like it was speculated to be, that then we would definitely start the uh, uh, developer preview this year. And I was surprised. I was thinking it was going to be coming sometime like in December. And so I was surprised when it uh, came out this month. Uh, what are your thoughts about it? I think Google is all serious about this. And that I really like because now what would happen is that um, when we get the new phones in August, it will be rocking the brand new uh, yeah. OS. And that's I, how it ought to be. I agree. And I think my theory is that Google did this for that reason, because people like Warren... <laughs> Uh, I was are, upset. I was yeah, really upset. Yeah, and, and I said, I said it doesn't matter. Like I said, it doesn't matter. You're you're going to have whatever the newest thing is for seven years. And you said no, I want seven OS. Exactly. Updates. So you know what exactly. Google did? They took QPR three and they they renamed it Android sixteen to make everybody happy. <laughs> so yeah. they'll think they're up to date. And when it, in reality, like it, it's just a name. Like they don't rebuild the operating system every year. It's just they add a couple more features. You know, they add them in QPR, so they add them in the next version of Android. It's just the time of year that makes the number change. It's not the fact that it's like really something brand new built from the ground up. So I think they just they, they did away with QPR three this year and just let it be Android sixteen, and everybody's gonna feel like they got their seven OS updates they deserve. <laughs> not that they'll have their phone in seven years, but. They'll, they'll at least not have to worry about that. Yeah, because I, I think the whole thing, though, for me is you get this brand new phone because the tradition has always been that you get a brand new phone and it has new OS on it. And then uh, this year, they just threw it up to the birds. And it was just so annoying. I'm running around with this thing running Android 14. Doggone it, man. Don't do that. Uh, so... <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, so let's talk about some of the things though that uh, came with this one. And uh, like you said, you know, some of the stuff we saw in uh, the QPR that is not going to be coming till March. So you see what's going on here. Um, but I think uh, probably one of the highlights of of this one is the uh, uh, you know the uh, notification cooldown. You know, if you're 
one of those that happen to be giving permissions to a lot of things for notifications. You guys know I don't do notifications at all. Um, the only thing that I have is my messaging and Telegram. Uh, those are probably the only two in my home um, app. So like when someone comes to the door, I know who's uh, there at the door and all of that. But other than that, uh, frankly, I don't hardly have anything running you know, when it comes to notifications. So the whole idea is a two-minute cool down. Uh, maybe you have uh, an app that is continuously sending you uh, notifications. You'll still get those notifications, but, you know, you're not going to be hearing the ping, ping, ping. I mean, it's not going to be like putting them in a, uh, you know, in a silent mode either. I mean, like in a silent category either. But the whole idea is that we, we want to give you that, that cool down so you're not bombarded by, uh, you know, notific notifications and, and things like that. Uh, what do you guys think about that? I know for me, uh, it really doesn't mean anything to me because I don't do notifications like I indicated. Can you enable it um, like for apps or it should be uh, uh, for the whole system? I mean, is it uh, per app basis or what's the, the thing? Uh, so the whole idea is that let's say if you have an active app that is very active and you're, you're receiving so many notifications within a, a, a short time, or maybe you, you turn on your phone, maybe you haven't turned it on for a while, and you know how it is that when you turn it on and if you've missed several notifications, let's say uh, like me, like maybe I'll go and grab my Pixel 7 or Pixel 8 or, or 6 or whatever, and you turn it on and you're hearing all these notifications coming in, ping, 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 because you haven't, uh, you know, turned it on for a while. So if there are several notifications coming from that, from one of those apps, you're going to hear that it's going to cool it down so you're not going to be hearing those, those pings. Uh, so... I think but, I like the idea. If if you can choose, like, is does it decide what what apps are sending too many notifications, or you, can you choose like, I do want to get all my notifications from X app, but all the other apps you can, you know, manage however you want. Like, do you know if there's that kind of control of it, or is it just an on and off thing, or is it just on and you can't turn it off? Uh, I don't like I said though I don't do notifications, so I didn't dig into <laughs> that to see how if there was any settings to say, hey, you know, I I want these notifications, um, you know, come on, you know, I don't want to cool down for this notification. I want it to, you know, keep pinging. But the whole idea is, you know, to reduce all that noise. Uh, is is the noise control? If it was me, I would have named it noise control, notification noise control, uh, <laughs> or cool down, whatever <laughs> the case may be. Because I tell you, it can be very annoying. Uh, and, and probably that's what led me to uh, turning off notifications in its in entirety, because I just don't like that wholesome idea of, you know, just so much random noise going on. Uh, I'm not a noisy kind of person. I don't know what the, the whole thing is. Yeah, but sometimes you need to hear the tone because, for example, here at the local news or the news app that I use, um, actually sometimes there there are like uh, events happening quickly, and I have to 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 check the developments and stuff. So uh, it it yeah it, it sends notifications uh, after each other. Okay, and maybe in two minutes I'll get more than three or four or whatever. So the point is, I want to to keep knowing. I, I want to know when. Uh, it is like sending me notifications. I don't want to uh, keep checking. I want to hear the tone. So if that thing is not optional, which is something that I doubt, I think it will be optional, but I'm, I'm not sure about, is if, if it's going to be uh, f uh, like for for each app individually, like if you are able to, to uh, have it in the notifications of each app, the settings of the notifications, or if it's only an on-off toggle for everything. So this is what I'm not sure about. But other than that, if if it's optional or not, I think it should be optional. I assume that because it it doesn't make sense if it's not optional. 
No, I'm almost positive there's going to be a settings on there per app that one could yeah. choose. Uh, I want this one to keep pinging me or not because, as you indicated, yeah, you may want to hear that. But the whole idea is that, let's say, maybe you're in a WhatsApp group, for example, and, uh, you know, constantly maybe it's an active group. I belong to one group. Um, I don't have any notifications turned on for it. Uh, <laughs> And all of that is muted and all of that. But I believe this should would definitely be something that uh, one customizes yes. as to how often. But uh, I, I can my, see the usage of all of, of both sides. My assumption is that it's going to be a way to control it by per app from the OS level. Because, for example, in Gmail, you have the option in Gmail in the settings to say alert me every time I get an email or just alert me once um and then i'll know i have new emails and don't alert me after that you know that's something you can change if the app lets you but this sounds like something that's going to allow you to turn on similar functionality even if it's not built into the app to let you do that type of thing which if that's how it how it's going to work then you know i'm all for it Yeah, I think that's how it, it, it should work. And so another thing, though, that I noticed when I did, um, after I installed and all of that, and I chose to have it bring my apps and all of that. But then what happened was that when it came up, it was doing the restoration. And usually uh, it should show your home screen customization and mine didn't. It, it just have like, you know, how it is that you see those three uh, a few apps at the bottom, like Play Store, Google Folder, and all of that. And then, um, but I didn't see my folders because what I like doing with my phones is that I have a customization. I have maybe like uh, several folders that I categorize things into. I have messaging, Bible, audio, uh, uh, navigation, money, and things like that. Now, so when it came up, I wasn't seeing those. And I was a little bit upset. I'm like, what's going on? This is really odd. And so what I did was, I'm like, okay, you know, forget that. I'm going to do a reset. So I did a reset, you know, factory reset, and then started all over again. And sure enough, this time, all of my folders are, are up there. So if that happens to you, uh, probably you should do that. But if you don't have any customization, and then, you know, you'll be fine. And it could just be a fluke at my end or something to that effect. But um, that's what happened to me. And it was like, it was a big file. I think like maybe two something gigs. I, I don't remember. It, it was quite a big file. Warren, I have a question for you. Since you do factory resets uh, like five times per day. So I want to yeah. ask you, uh, I want to ask you, how do you restore um, things on the phone. Uh, uh, do you use the Google restoration? I mean, it's it's a headache uh, restoring things. Even when I use the smart switch, actually, I hate factory setting. But when I when when I uh, you, uh, bought my phone, uh, I use smart switch, switch, which is better than Google restoration. But I was having trouble. So how do you restore things? Uh, so on my Pixel phone, what happens is that when I reset it and it comes up and it shows me the restoration points or so the restore points uh, maybe two hours ago or three days ago or, and you know or do you, you want to restore from your pixel 4 you want to restore from your pixel 7 pixel 6 and, and things like that so when I choose one of those restoration points and then uh, that will restore it, everything that that phone or that restore point has now and additionally if I choose to like say, hey, uh, I'm going to restore from my Pixel 8, for example. So what would happen is that I'll choose that. But in addition to that, I uh, plug in the USB also as well. And so it's using both Wi-Fi, something that Google implemented, you know, with Pixel 9. And so it's restoring both uh, via the Wi-Fi as well as restoring from the direct connection. So that takes like seven minutes and everything is done. So it's, it's really quick. That's, yeah, but you are resetting your your you are resetting your uh, the same phone. I mean, you are resetting the same phone. So, do you restore from another phone? 
Uh, what do you mean? Yeah, I could use the restore from another phone if I no, want I mean, it. What do you do usually? I mean, okay, you, you have your Pixel 9 and it's uh, 7 o'clock uh, in the morning and you decide that, okay, it's this is uh, my uh, time to factory reset my device. So you do this factory reset. Then what do you do? I mean, you, what do you do? Oh, what do I do? Uh, like say, I want to use a phone. Is that what you're saying? No, no, your phone. Actually, you didn't update as you do always, and then you restore the the the. Uh, you do a factory reset, and you want to restore. Do you restore um, using Google so from the same? I think I'll answer the question. What he does is it he when you restore from a device that's backed up in the cloud, all that really happens is it downloads the apps from the Play Store for you that you had on that other device and transfers all of your settings and stuff from that other device. It'll transfer your messages and call logs from that other device. But as far as like pictures and videos and files that you had saved on that phone, it, um, it's those not going to download them. One, no, those ones will be going but, to China if you don't back them up. Yeah, but they're like usually that. saved. If they're usually saved somewhere. Either you've saved them in Google Drive or Google Photos or something. But if you have fi files that on your other phone that you're not intentionally backing up somewhere in the cloud, you're not going to be able to restore those random files uh, just from a regular cloud backup. Yeah, this yeah. is the reason why I'm asking this question to Warren. I mean, because he always, always do resets. So, uh, like, uh, he, uh, doing those resets... I mean, and uh, you know all of the troubles with Google uh, backup and restoration, and you know that uh, anything that is locally saved won't be restored, and also update as well. So um, it's rare to have update restored anyway. So uh, aren't you losing stuff after you reset, or you don't mind this? No, you are not losing stuff. So, like John said, though, if if you have files for example. So we got two methods of restoration. So let's say maybe I want to restore stuff. I don't want to restore what I had on the Pixel 9, for example, but I wanted to restore, you know, um, because I have the same setup on my Pixel 8 Pro. And if I want that, and if I hook it up, all the files that I save on the Pixel 8 also will come to my Pixel 9. So like maybe I have the books folder, for example, and all of that, and I have like, you know, books on there, or maybe I have music on there. They will come to my Pixel 9 as well, as long as I hook it up to uh, that uh, Pixel 8 Pro via U USB cable, but it'll be restoring it both via that USB uh, portal as well as via the uh, Wi-Fi. Now, if I do not, choose to bring it from my Pixel 8 and hooking it up with a USB cord, then those files are not going to be there. But if I have the, the, the need to only just uh, do a Wi-Fi thing and not uh, use the USB and I want to restore from my Pixel 9 from uh, 5 a.m. this morning, and I don't want to, you know, do any get anything from my Pixel 8, and I have files on there that I need, then I will back those files up to uh, either my computer or back them up to the cloud. And so that when I do this restoration, then I'll just, you know, grab that folder from wherever I backed it up and, and dump it onto my Pixel 9 after I'm done with the restoration. But so, yeah, that's... That's what happens, and I am a firm believer every time I get a new OS or major update, I want a clean start because look at what happened when I restored or when I updated, my folders or home customization wasn't there. and I had to do a second restoration. I don't know why it didn't do it, you know, just by simply updating it. It didn't do it. And it's pro possibly just a bug with the developer preview. Um I'm sure they'll get it ironed out. But this is actually a good segue because, you know, as Kareen is pointing out, it's a pain in the butt. <laughs> I think having to set up most of your apps from scratch all over again. Um, there, I have seen articles with pe people picking apart uh, Android 16 saying that it looks like they're trying to implement something similar to what iOS has done for, shoot, years and years to where it will yes. save your your app data, your credentials and back them up securely in the cloud so that when you do restore, it will restore 
the app data and it will restore um you know all your settings and stuff for each app and and apparently and i hope this is true <laughs> the the developers don't have to do anything to enable this it all happens um using this new method of backing up apps and however the the developers from what i read the developers can implement something that will make it a little more seamless to the point where you won't even have to open the app so like the um the developer can enable something so that even if you restore from the cloud and you haven't even opened that app yet you'll still be getting notifications and everything from that app and already be signed into it and everything but if they don't do anything then the next time you open that app it will work. restore everything for you yeah yeah so this is long overdue i was reading the same thing too john and it was something that i was excited about because what has been in the past is that Google only had like a 25 MB, uh, you know, um, app backup, you know. So uh, you and I know that a lot of apps is like, you know, some of them are like 100 something, some of them are 300 MBs and all of that. And so the limitation that Google had on it, and I think part of the problem is that maybe for some reason they're looking at, oh, you know, you only have like 15 gigs of uh uh, Gmail or whatever, but I think yeah. probably they're going to be opening up something that would uh, make it store it, our, you know. Yeah, and in most in cloud. most cases, the app obviously it depends on the app and whether it's saving files locally or not. But in most cases, the app data for the app is not that big. Like the app itself is the large part, and it'll still get that from the store, but it'll also back up the app data for you, um, you know, to the cloud securely um, using. I don't remember what they said exactly, but it'll have your credentials and everything saved too. And um, another thing to keep in mind though, is if if this is as good as, good as it sounds like it's gonna be, it's gonna be a while before we see this because not only is the device you're restoring from gonna have to have Android 16, but your old device is also gonna have to have Android 16. So it might be a while before you see this, unless of course you're Warren and you're going to be, you know, factory resetting your Android 16 device, then, you know, once this um, system is up and running, then it, it should make your life a little more easier, I would think, Warren. Yeah, well, like I said, this is way overdue. We really needed this like yesterday, <laughs> you know what I mean? Because it's a pain to, uh, you open up an app and you have to log in again. And if you happen to be someone who does not have an autofill service, then, you know, you're kind of tossed, right? You have to go find where you wrote down that password if you have that piece of paper that you wrote your passwords on mm -hmm. and, and things like that. So it, I can see that and can even, be very painful <laughs> to say. Yeah, and even list. if you do have all your credentials saved and it logs in, you know, it's not that difficult. You just put your fingerprint there and it signs you in. But a lot exactly. of times you have to set all the settings back how you want it to in some apps, you know, and that's <laughs> that's the pain in the butt. That is the pain in the part, but uh, so with this implementation, it's just like uh, it's just like picking up your new your old phone, but on a new phone. In other words, you you pick up your your new phone. It's it's just like using your old phone. Everything is there, and yeah. frankly, I like that implementation. Because... And even s small things like having to go through the onboarding again. Like I yeah. already know how to use this app. Don't teach me how to use this app. You exactly. Know? Just exactly. having not having to deal with that is also another plus. Uh, that's the thing that our Fruitvale friends have been enjoying for a while. Well, this would be great, really, because actually, uh, uh, now you mentioned uh, iPhones. I, and I should say that on iOS, the restoration is seamless. Uh, yeah, I know the iCloud thing is about 4 gigs, which will be actually uh, filled out uh, in, in no time. And uh, people sometimes uh, just need to, to subscribe to to the more storage plan but i mean it's very seamless it's very convenient it's something really great uh we don't have this on android even even when we uh, do the uh restoration using a cable uh from phone to phone actually we still face issues like when i did the restoration using smart switch i had to uninstall applications and then re reinstall them for them to work, uh, I had uh, some some troubles with some apps, and like a cappella, for example, couldn't see my voices. I had to to reinstall the voices. I think also a vocalizer as well. 
And so, so those are, ju are just examples. And I'm talking about a restoration from phone, phone to phone, okay, but uh, using the same phone to restore, which, which means that if I'm using, for example, Google restoration, you know, the troubles that we are having. So having this development will be a real improvement if they do it right, because actually Google uh, backup and restoration should be improved. Of course, it needs this because it's it's just, it's not, as, as John said, it's not only logging in, it's all about everything, all about every setting that you spend time uh, like, uh, making to your liking and uh, doing everything as you want it to be. So all of this takes time. So we should just uh, be able to restore things and have them as we left them before. So yeah, this this would be great, I think. It will be great. And like, you know, we said, yeah, that's a nice example there, Karen, uh, because uh, frankly, it just doesn't make sense at all. And I don't know why we haven't done this, you know, all these years. Um, it, it's just been very painful. And finally, someone is waking up to the reality. I mean, we, we're not like in uh, 2009. <laughs> yeah, Google's been putting too much faith in the developers to implement things. Because, you know, it is possible some apps do it, but it's rare. It's so rare. Like no developer goes out of their way to make sure that this type of thing works. So I'm glad Google seems to be taking it into their own hands and making it something that does not have to be opted into by the developer. Yeah, and you know, talking about acapella, Karen, like you mentioned vocalize and acapella, I, I hope that also would work because like it, it's a pain um, to be able to go back and download those voices. I like the way acapella handles it. Vocal, vocalizer, on the other hand, however, I don't like how they go about uh, doing their voices because with acapella, you can have it download all the voices that you have purchased when you're uh, launching the app with uh, vocalizer, however, you have to download them one by one, and it can be a pain if you have a bunch of voices. So, uh, Vocalizer, if you are hearing us, change also the way in which you make people download their purchased uh, voices. Let us just get them at once. It knows that I have five voices or whatever X amount of voices that I have. I don't want to go in there and you know, downloading them one by one. That's just kind of silly. Yeah, indeed. But uh, talking about a cappella, actually, the thing is that they are so much trying to fight cracks and stuff. So <laughs> they, uh, I think this is just uh, some of their one of their ways to prevent cracking. So because when you when you launch the app, <laughs> it'll see that. Uh, the, yeah, really. <laughs> That's really the point. They are very aggressive in this, and they have. They are very aggressive. I mean, they yeah. have the right to do so. <laughs> Yeah. yeah, but you know, when, when you launch the app and it sees that, okay, the folder is there and the voices are there, it will just not let you use them until you uninstall and reinstall. And uh, yeah, I think <laughs> it makes sense. <laughs> yeah, but, but what I like about them, though, is that, you know, it will say, hey, you want to download all your voices. That's what I want to see Vocalizer do. Um, so I launched the app and um, it asks, uh, you know, do you want to download your stuff? Yes. And you want to download all of your voices. So I, I really like that. Yeah, I know that they're trying to fight whatever and all of that. And, uh, you know, kudos to those guys uh, because people are constantly trying to crack things, right? We all know that. And so uh, Acapella is working hard. And if us, they work hard to do this, I would like them also to work hard to give us better voices because to be honest, it used to be that acapella, acapella voices were really great voices, even back in the day without AI. I mean, they were great sounding voices, but I don't know. Lately, I, I'm not very, you know, I'm not a great fan of the voices anymore. Um, Karen, I know you like TTS as well. Uh, lots of us like TTS sounds and all of that, but uh, acapella voices, I just use it because I know I've purchased it, and so they are there, but it's not something I don't even use it as a daily driver. Well, the thing here is related to uh, using the voices for commercial stuff, for companies, uh, for flights, for you know, for flight, and, uh, flight announcements and stuff. So this is the point. They are trying to keep some voices exclusive to uh, 
those things because, well, to be honest, uh, they will get more profit from from those things. So I think this is the problem with Acapella. They, they had some new voices, but in the same time, they are not available for Android and they are not also available for Windows. So uh, if they will keep this uh, way of thinking, I think it, it we will have less voices with time. So I think this is the point. This is the problem. Other than that, uh, well, I, I don't know. What, like if they if they ha if they have an incentive to try to make better voices for Android and Windows, knowing all of the troubles, uh, like, uh, are you going to to be able to publish uh, to to purchase to sell the voices? Will people uh, purchase them and all of the, those things? So I think this is the main problem for now. So I don't see things improving unless uh, there is really something. Uh, that would be a big surprise. But uh, as things are moving right now, I don't think that they are going to change their their way. Which actually, to, to be to be honest or to be fair, um, they are for profit at the end of the day. So they will search for profitable solutions. So yeah, this is the problem, unfortunately. Yeah, definitely. Everyone's looking for that profit and maximizing that profit. Uh, that totally makes sense. And like you said, I think they're more into the commercial thing because you see them flying all over the place doing these summits in Paris or in Brazil and, you know, New York and, and things like that. But, and I, you know, it makes me hopeful thinking, oh, wow, we're going to get new voices. And then you turn around and look, and no, uh, it's not for us. It's just for, like you said, you know, maybe for trains, for, you know, <laughs> uh, airports or, you know, whatever, things like that. And it's just, I wish that at least they throw a little uh, do uh, doggy bone to, <laughs> bone to the dogs <laughs> for, for a change. I mean, even if it's just a, a one voice that is nice voice, for example, and if you want to charge uh, $10 for it, you know, people are going to buy it if it's a nice sounding uh, voice. But uh, that's the one thing with acapella that I, I don't like. And um, I mean, I, I probably have like six or seven, maybe nine voices uh, from them, but I don't use it because of that. I mean, now and then uh, I go to use that Heather. Heather used to sound very nice. I know if you guys remember back from even like, on uh, like uh, Symbian phones, for example, I think, was it Code Factory? One of them had that a cappella voice. Uh, it was so nice and it, it just was so clear even back in the early 2000s and, and all of that. But now it's just, I don't know, it's just so, so even Heather doesn't sound good anymore. Like some, you know, gurgly thing and yeah, I, I'm not. But they're loud. I give it to them. Um, their voices sound loud and uh, louder than most out there. But give me that quality back. And they are responsive, to be honest. Uh, they are responsive. Or they are considered from the responsive uh, voices out there. And they are stable. If I compare uh, a cappella to a vocalizer, um, I say it uh, confidently that uh, they are more responsive. Uh, I mean, they are more stable. It's rare to have a crash with a cappella. However, with vocalizer, it's un like it's it's uh, so much uh, like it's it's really something that will happen to you. Like if you keep using uh, vocalizer voices for three days it's likely that you will have a crash after that, if not before the three days, actually. Yeah, stability and responsiveness, <laughs> I think, are the main important aspects that we look <laughs> or that we, we, yeah, we appreciate a cappella for these two things, actually. Yeah, that's true. Uh, when it comes to responsiveness, uh, uh, a cappella is one of those uh, responsive. Uh, so if you're someone who's kind of like a fan of the eloquence and you're missing that on your brand new phone uh, a cappella may be something you want to look into because you have that responsiveness uh, that's coming from that tts and so yeah it's a plus for them and i, I do give them that that their voices are responsive and you have that further customization of the dictionary and uh, some uh, tts engines uh, don't have that uh, google i'm looking at you uh, <laughs> so <laughs> That's the one thing to uh, look out for. If you want further customization, that's another thing to look for. 
Yeah, but outside of that, so, you know, um, on the Android 15 developer, you know, 16 developer one, though, you know, we, some of the things, uh, like John said earlier on, uh, are there, like, from the QPR uh, 2 beta 1 that we talked about, like the uh, uh, the DND do not disturb uh, mode now, you know, it's now uh, uh, been changed and... Um, and then there's another one that I'm not remembering, but there are a few, you know, changes like that. And some of the things are not active yet. So we'll see the next developer preview too, like in December. And then in January, we'll have that public beta. So if you're waiting, you don't want to be a uh, part of the developer thing uh, and you don't want to jump until it comes to a beta, then that will happen in January of next year. But I am surprised to see it working uh, very smooth on my phone, and it's my main driving uh, phone. Um, I know if you, uh, the advice is don't do that. If you, um, you know, if you don't have other devices, something happens, you don't want to be locked out. And so, but uh, so far for me, I haven't seen any app that is not working. So I'm I'm happy. Uh, sometimes you find this thing working well on a developer uh, preview, and then you get to the beta, and something stupid happens. I remember that happening last year. I remember Austin and I were talking about that the developer was actually even better than one of the betas, and I don't remember which uh, beta was that uh, for. Um, Android 15, I think maybe maybe it was uh, maybe uh, beta 4 or was it beta 3? There was something that was broken, but it was working well in the developer preview. So that's one of the things to keep an eye on uh, when you jump onto things of this nature. And the funny thing is that if you're right, which I expect you are right, I also expect to see the public beta in January. Um, we'll be seeing the public beta of Android 16 from Google before we even see Android 15 on any Samsung device. So we're still waiting for the beta to drop on Samsung devices, and they won't have it out publicly till probably at least February. I don't know what happened this year, though. That's kind of really odd. Wouldn't you so, uh, say so? It has never happened um I mean, at least in the most recent years, Samsung has been stepping up to the plate. And I don't know, something awful happened. Something must have gone on awfully wrong uh, this year. Um, you know you know what I mean? It's just not right. It's not, I mean, Samsung has been doing better uh, over the last few years. I, I don't know, something ought to happen. Well, I was reading uh, that they are trying to make it uh, the most stable version first uh, this is the first thing and then uh, they are changing the animations a lot of animations and a lot of uh things related to to, to, uh, to the how, how animations works uh, work and uh, uh they, they are i think making some like big changes to this so and until now someone was saying that uh, the beta is buggy so even the beta that is going to be released i think next week it will be buggy, so and the animations will have bugs and stuff. So I think they are still facing issues because of this, but they are promising that they are going to have a good experience. So uh, let's wait and see, and let's hope that this um, big delay will will result in uh, like a, a really stable experience. So let's let's hope so. And I'm thinking, though, that uh, I think with this uh, change from Google, uh, something is telling me that, you know, probably when Samsung does its uh, August uh, stuff, uh, probably they'll be uh, coming out on Android 16. W wouldn't you guys think so? I would like to believe so. <laughs> uh, Maybe I, I'm I just would, dreaming. <laughs> if this year hadn't happened, I would have thought so. But now I'm like, uh, no, probably not. Yeah, but I mean, <laughs> between now and then, though, probably. But I, I'm hoping that's probably good, what is going to happen, though. The good thing is, you know, like Kareen mentioned, it doesn't really matter. As long as you make sure it's stable before you release it, that's the important thing. Especially with Samsung having already, <laughs> like, you don't get that many new things from Google's version of Android. Like, Google is just adding 
you know, the modes, you know, Samsung has had their own modes thing for years. So it's not like we're anticipating all these great new features. You know, that being said, I am anticipating <laughs> the app data backup that we were talking about earlier, but a, a lot of stuff, you know, um, it's, it's more important to just, I mean, they, they have been great with security updates, you know, for the devices they've promised, you know, they come at, for me, at least they come pretty quickly every month. And I think that's the important thing, you know, and make sure the next version is ready before you release it. Yeah. I and also, also want to this mention... is a custom UI. So it, it's, yeah, it's, it's not, not, yeah. So it, it yeah, needs exactly. uh, work. It needs modifications. It's not just taking stuff from Google and putting uh, like things. Yeah. And I hope they take advantage of this delay. And <laughs> but if they're going to continue this nonsense with their own version of TalkBack, I hope they base it off of 15.1. Because if they only base it off of 15.0 and this doesn't even st hit devices publicly for until February, you know, they're going to be more behind than they normally are. And talking about, you know, TalkBack 15, so my developer, though, uh, came out with TalkBack 15. Uh, th there was TalkBack 15.1 waiting to be updated, but it didn't ship with uh, TalkBack 15.1. In other words, the developer... 16 one um uh, developer preview one for android 16 uh doesn't come with uh, talkback 15.1 rather it came with talkback 15. yeah but with google's version it's coming from the play store so this is not a big deal however with samsung's version as we all know right now it's uh baked into the system itself so having galaxy store updates uh like they, they are not uh, giving you thing, thing, the updates through Galaxy Store, even if it's still in the Galaxy Store as an app. So this is the main problem. And I'm really not optimistic. I'm like, I, I'm just starting to think that Samsung is going to give us uh, whatever version they want to call it, uh, but it, it might be without even image descriptions. So until now, they haven't included any image description. So <laughs> I, I yeah. don't think they're going to yeah, do the same. She's, so <laughs> no, she, she's <laughs> right. I'm worried about that, too, because they, yeah, they ha they never even implemented the, you know, the, what I call the stupid, <laughs> the stupid image descriptions <laughs> that were useless. Like, they never even implemented that in their version. They they stripped it out just like they stripped out, you know, the proximity sensor setting. You know, they just completely removed it and pretended it didn't exist. Yeah, but regarding yeah. the proximity sensor, it makes sense because it doesn't work on Samsung phones because yeah. of the virtual proximity sensor. They don't use hardware. I don't. I don't think that they have any device, or maybe just uh, a few devices that have the uh, hardware proximity sensor. So they did that just for people not to say, "Hey, this is not working for me." So. Yeah, no, I I'm, I agree with that decision. I'm just saying, in the same way that they remove features for good reasons, they remove features for reasons I don't understand. You know, maybe they just thought it wasn't up to par. <laughs> if if that's the case, the kudos uh, to them because I didn't, I definitely didn't think it was up to par. Um, but yeah, I'm still nervous. I, I'll believe it when I see it. <laughs> you know, when we get the next version, what features they're going to include or not include. You know, I'm still naively hoping that they don't include any version and just let you get it from the play store but you know i've been hoping for this for years i think though that given the fact that they're into the ai thing i would like to believe though that uh when they bring up their talk back which is going to be talk back 15 i, I believe it's not going to be 14.x it's going to be talk back 15 at the least and I'm sure we'll have that Gemini description in there, the full one that we have on Google. I don't know. I'm just kind of naively uh, believing that that's going to be what it would be. I, I don't know why I feel that way, but I, I'm almost positive it's going to yeah. be there. <laughs> if I had to bet on it, I would bet that it's going to be in there, but <laughs> I would not be surprised if it wasn't. Let's just put it that way. Yeah. Uh, it will it'll be disappointing though, but I, I don't know. I don't see any reason why they're not going to bring it in there since uh, they want to keep things nice, uh, you know, uh, since they are into the AI thing as well. I think that they're not just going to simply discard us, I mean, the blind out there and not um, implement what is already part of TalkBack yeah. from Google. So I agree. I, I'm not afraid. I, I think they're going to do it right. 
Karen, you think my optimism is uh, good? <laughs> or do you I think prefer I'm... to wait. <laughs> I prefer because with Samsung you never know. So I prefer to wait. <laughs> yeah, well, I, I just I'm almost I'm almost positive, confident it's gonna be there. So if it doesn't, then you guys can pound me on the, on the head. I'll take it. Um, but. <laughs> I remember, I'll, I'll, I'll tell you about this, of course. If, and we will, we will have a, like, uh, like we, we should dedicate time to saying what did Samsung do? I, that's crazy. That's. Oh my gosh! Yeah. So uh, when it does happen, then we'll, we'll talk about it, and uh, we'll remember this episode two or seven. You know how confident I felt that it's going to be there with one UI seven. And if it's not there, I'll take you to the foot of the castle.